Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how Link in .NET 9 can be up to 1800 times faster in some use cases with some amazing performance improvement done by the .NET team. Now, if you've been following the Link journey up until now, you'd know that Microsoft is really focusing on making Link as fast as it can be because it was historically something pretty slow. In fact, I worked in companies where we were not allowed to use Link at all because of performance reasons. So it's very nice to see Microsoft actually optimizing Link to a very good degree to the point where it's really competing or in some cases surpassing handwritten code with things like loops, for example. In this video, I'm going to show you some of the most important Link performance improvements in .NET 9. And I'm also going to show you how Microsoft did it. And if you have a suspicion on how they did it, leave a comment down below. Okay, so let me show you what I have here. I have a .NET 9 project, but it's actually targeting both .NET 8 and .NET 9. And I'm going to run benchmarks against both .NET 8 and .NET 9 and comparing the difference because we want to see without changing anything but the .NET version, how faster is our code? Now, I want to start from this one, the benchmarks 4, because I think that's an example of something that all of us are using in some capacity. So what we have here is a list where we create a range of 1000 items from 0 to 999, and then we say to list, so we create a list, and then we use the any, all, count, first, or single methods. These are extremely common methods in C Sharp. I see them all the time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the benchmarks for a name and I'm going to run some benchmarks. So I'm going to say benchmark runner run and just see where we stand with performance with these very simple things that all they're doing is they're taking the input and then they're running a check on it. It's very common code in C Sharp. You see this all the time. So let's go ahead and run these benchmarks and see what we get back. My configuration will allow me to run it both in .NET 8 as a baseline and also in .NET 9 in the same execution. Now, while this is running, and in case you missed it on DOM Train, we're running our last week of the back to school discount. So until the end of September, you can get 30% off any course with code BTS30. And actually today we just released a brand new course on DOM Train called Career Nailing the Behavioral Interview. And it's co-authored by two authors, Nico Centino, a principal software engineering manager in Microsoft, and Ryan Murphy, a software engineering manager at Yelp. The behavioral interview is something many people are actually failing interviews on. I know we failed many people because of the behavioral aspect, even though they were very good technically. So it's a core fundamental part of any developer and many people are skipping on preparing it because they think if they write good code, that's all there is to it. Now, the great thing about this course is that it's still getting the benefit of the 30% discount, but it only applies for the first 100 of you. So I'm going to put a link in the description. You can check it out if it's for you. And I can guarantee you that if you learn everything in that course, you will never fail a behavioral interview again. Okay, so results are back and let's see what we have here. So as you can see, we have a massive, massive improvement from five times faster, five times faster, five times faster, three times faster, two and a half times faster, and again, five times faster, and zero memory allocation for any of those methods. So we go from 1.1 microsecond to around 200 nanoseconds for any all count first single. Now, how is Microsoft doing this? Because for me, I believe that you should always know how these optimizations occur. So you can actually use that knowledge on your own code if you have the opportunity. So if we go over here and we go on any of those methods, let's go on first because we actually kind of covered this in the last CodeCop video, but I want to show you again. So if we go in the .NET 8 implementation of this method, you're going to see that all first is doing is it's getting the enumerable and then the predicate. And then we go into the try get first method and it's doing a few checks and then it's looping around that enumerable. So you have all of these move next and current calls because of the enumerator, which in .NET 9, if we go and we choose the .NET 9 version, as you're going to see, this was completely rewritten. And if we go into try get first now, what we're doing first, if we're checking, hey, can I actually get the span? Yes, it's always spans. It's only spans. You should know about that by now. So can we try to get the span out of that enumerable coming in? And how are we doing this? Well, we go in and we say, is it an array. If it is, use unsafe.as, which by the way, deserves a video of its own. It's an amazing, very, very dangerous feature, but if you know how to use it, it's incredible. Leave a comment down below if you want me to make a video on that. And if we can do that, then we get the span out of it. 
If it is a list, then we're using the collections marshal.aspan method, which by the way, you can use too to get a span out of the list. And the way this method is working is by going in and actually accessing the internal array that every list is backed by. Because if we go into the lists, sorry for all the jumping, but if we go into the list, every list is backed by an array actually. And then a list is a wrapper around an array that knows how to resize it effectively and then adds a bunch of methods on top of it. And if we can do that, then we're getting the span out and we're returning it with some very, very interesting stuff like the memory marshal dot get array data reference. Again, a public method you can use as well if you know what you're doing. It's some of my favorite methods to use. And if we can do that, then we get out the span. Otherwise, we return an empty span basically and we say we could not find the span. So go and fall back to what you were doing before, which if we go back into the original implementation, if you can find the span, then go and fall back for the slower versions. But for the majority of the use cases what you're using an array or a list, this will be heavily, heavily optimized. It's an amazing feature you don't even know about. And I do think you should know about because those are improvements you can actually make on your own code if you want to. Now this plenty more improved here. Let's take a look at the benchmarks one class. So what do we have here? We have a bunch of enumerables of 1000 items and we do a few operations. So for example, here we turn it into an array and we say, give me the distinct values in this array. Or here we append a value and we select the value of each item multiplied by two. Here we have a reversal. Here we have a default if empty and we have a selection again and a multiplication. We have the two list, skip and take, and we have a union and we have the first, last count, element add and first methods on any of those enumerals. I'm going to run this benchmark because I find it very, very interesting. Let's go ahead and add this. This just shows you that you can do more complex operations in Link and you'll see how they perform. And it's very clever how Microsoft actually optimized this to be that fast. They really did a lot of changes behind the scenes to make this possible. Because when you chain methods in Link, well, you're adding a wrapper on top of a wrapper, on top of a wrapper, on top of a wrapper, and you have this chain of responsibility that this has to happen first and then this has to happen first and you add one thing on top of the other. But if Link was smarter, it would be able to combine some of those operations and consolidate some of those iterators into fewer jumps from one method to the other and from one operation to the other. And that's exactly what is happening here. Let's wait for this benchmark to return and I'm going to show you how everything works behind the scenes. Okay, so results are back and let's see what we have here. So. As you can see, distinct first from 39 nanoseconds down to eight, no memory. The memory aspect of it is always massive to me because again, less allocations, less garbage collection, less pausing on your application. But look at this, append select last from 3.2 microseconds to two nanoseconds. It's like crazy. That's the 1,600 times faster, just crazy reverse range half the time, default if empty select element at 2.8 down to four, three times faster here, and again, many times faster here. So how is Microsoft doing this? Well, as described in Stephen Tobb's performance improvements in .NET 9 blog post, which these examples are coming from, by the way, this is mostly coming from consolidating internal interfaces and removing overhead. An example would be that the order by method, for example, followed by a first, will now avoid full data set copies or sorts, which before wouldn't, leading to way better performance. You also see a lot of internal interface refactoring. So I don't know if you remember, but there is this interface called iPartition, which was actually used by many enumerables in .NET that is not used anymore. Instead, these things now are consolidated in an iterator, which I don't actually know if we have access to. It doesn't look like we do, but if we go over here, let's take a look at .NET 9. I don't know if I will find it, but I will try. Yeah, here we go. Iterator of type T source. Now this is used now as another further optimization. This basically leads to fewer checks and cheaper virtual dispatch calls leading to, again, better performance. A very similar story can be seen here with skip and take. Skip and take before would have two iterators, but now they're consolidated, they're detected and consolidated into one, skipping another call. Ultimately, Link in .NET 9 just got way, way, way more clever and it's more self-aware. You have methods like to list or to array, knowing what's coming before and being able to 
optimize how to deal with that operation. The most common problem with this was the where and select methods, which would create two iterators. If .NET 9 now sees where and select, it's going to make one iterator, massive boost to all of your existing code bases just for updating a .NET version. There's more improvements over here, things like the any call has a massive improvement. Then we have all these other methods like chunk, distinct, group by, join, to look up, reverse, select, select many, skip while, take while, and where. All of that has been optimized when it comes to empty collections. Before .NET 9, all of these methods would allocate some memory in .NET 9. They don't allocate any memory and they can be up to 20 times faster with the two lookup method, for example, having a massive improvement. And in Benchmark 5, uh, we have a method like the sequence equal where you have two different sequences as an enumerable. We have an array of these values and then we have a list of the same values. Executing this would go from 26 microseconds to less than one microsecond, around 900 nanoseconds. Just massive, massive improvement and they're mostly done with making Link clever, rare, and also using span more. It seems that Microsoft is really investing in Link, which I really, really like. And I've actually started using Link more and more in my production code because it makes me so, so much more productive. The minuscule amount of performance I might be losing just doesn't matter anymore. But now one from you. Has your opinion changed on Link and what do you think about those changes? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching and as always, keep coding.